not something that burned a hole in my soul forever. Um, the way some people would say, what I've always wanted to be as a writer. Not at all. I have very, very few ideas all together. I have one at a time, which really is a good thing, because if I had two or more, I would give up on the first one when it started, when the going gets tough and say, Do you know, the other idea was a much better one. I'll, I'll scrap this and I'll start writing a different book. Uh, so I, I don't go there. A very simple ideas, always very simple. I wrote a book called The Woman on the Bus. It was literally about a woman who gets off a bus, very, very drunk um, in a small town. And we take it from there. Uh, you know, they get more complicated after that. The idea for Bright Lights and Promises was simply what if a woman trying to raise her son, a single parent, what if her mother fetched up on her doorstep? Um, what would happen then? You know, and, and beyond that, and I wondered for ages how I could get her to have a job in London that would be really like being a parent at work as well as at home. And I thought, well, an actress agent. My agents will think that they, it is based on them and there, there is great reason to believe that the character might be based on them and I'll tell you why. I'm married to an agent. I am uh, married to a man called Richard Cook who's an agent in Dublin. But it's, it's very interesting, the whole agent thing. And I, I really didn't think that I'd ever, you know, go into that area as a writer. I didn't want it to look like I was just, you know, lazily writing about what I know. Although that's often the best thing, <laughs> by the way. But um, I, I just thought that it, because it's such a London sort of job people might think to have, that that would be really good. But I also know that they have no life because I don't see him in the evenings. So I never see him. He doesn't come home in the evenings because when he finishes work, America wakes up. When he finishes, you know, work this end of the pond, America wakes up and also he may have to go and see a play or a film that some of his clients are in. And whereas that may sound like a great life, it means he has no life in fact of his own and that suited my purposes very well but I love the buzz of London equally though in Dublin I've got um, an elderly cat who I've known a lot longer than the husband who, who I'm deeply in love with and uh, she is the love of my life frankly uh, who knew I was going to be a mad cat lady when I grew older but I am uh, I do love the cat being around because sometimes if I'm really stuck I'll just get her to run over and back the keypad she writes some great stuff <laughs> her grammar and spelling are atrocious but then again look at Joyce or Beckett quite the same thing you know so I just I just clean it up leave it in usually fantastic as a dream sequence if you ever see a dream sequence in one of my books you know the cat wrote that you know unless you're Dame Judi Dench you don't work every day of the year as an actor um, so in the in the downtime in acting if you like you should be of course able to fill it with writing but uh, never happens that way they both clash with me I'm always trying to do an acting job and write at the same time it worries me a lot it's a bit of a Sophie's choice I hope I never have to say one or the other can't imagine life without either of them and I cannot imagine life without writing now um, I've just done a radio play with Ardlo Hanlon who played Father Dougal Maguire and you know it's the first time I've worked with them since uh, we finished Father Ted weird uh, but wonderful um, and uh, I never see Dermot at all these days he's very hard to get hold of uh, Dermot is of course dead in case anybody <laughs> wondered that I hadn't noticed that uh, which is why he's very very hard to get for interviews or to meet even for a pint uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if he just rounded the corner at any stage. You know, there's there's something. If anyone can come back, it'll be him. If, if there is a hereafter and he can do a deal with God or the devil, he'll be back. I am actually working on an opera, would you believe, as a librettist with um, a Northern Irish composer called Neil Martin. And uh, he writes a very, very beautiful music that's very influenced by Irish traditional music as well. And it is set in, um, in the ICU of Castlebar Hospital in County Mayo. I think that's a first. Um, and it's vaguely based on my father dying, actually. He had a stroke three years ago, almost to the day. Um, the Edinburgh Festival for me is, is really bittersweet now because um, one of the first things I did after he had died was to come and uh, be at the International Book Festival um, and do a talk at that. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's sort of based on him dying, based on kind of everybody dying. You know, it's an everyman kind of a, a thing. It's called Death of an Ordinary Man. I'm horribly excited about it. Um, I suppose the strange thing for me, coming from an acting background into writing, because I, I was an actor, you know, long before I ever started writing. The really interesting thing, though, about when you become a writer is that in the end of all, it, the, the book stops with you. It's down to you in the end. It's a solo thing, uh, you know, in terms of no matter how much help you've got from editors and copy editors and readers and whatever else, in the end, you take the blame if people don't like it or don't like sections of it. If you're an actor, 
there's a culture of blame, I'm here to tell you. You can say, well, the director made me do it like that, or I know they're giving me nothing out there, or I know, I wish I could have been, let's say it a different way. You know, there are so many different people you can share the blame with, whereas as a writer, you can't. It's just right down to you. And I love that about it as well as hating it.